and I thought for a bit of fun we time it to see how long it takes to do the oil change, air filter, spark plugs and cabin filter on a LEP GTI. Hello and welcome back to the Volks Wizard channel. Now it's been a very long time since I last posted a DIY video on an UP GTI, but a lot of them are over four years old now and that's the age where they start to become a little bit more needy particularly when it comes to servicing. For the first few years, you can get away with an oil and filter change, maybe a pollen filter as well, but at year four, that's suddenly when they need to have an air filter and spark plugs, and it's at this point where bits of DIY can save you an awful lot of cash. Now, I'm not saying do everything yourself. Every year, or 10,000 miles, whichever comes soonest, it's still a good idea to take the car to a garage for an oil change, ideally when the MOT is due, so then give it a good check over and they can stamp the service book, or in the case of the UP GTI, they can put an entry in the car's digital service history, which any registered independent can do. You don't need to go to a main dealer. But for everything else, now the cars are out of warranty, as long as you use good quality parts, you keep the receipts, and you make a note of what was done when, then a bit of DIY, I think in my opinion, is just as good. So let's get started then by having a look at the tools and parts needed to perform a full service on my UP GTI. As I mentioned in a previous video, my parts supplier is now a company called Deutsche Parts, who scour the world looking for genuine parts and accessories for cars and vans. They offer rapid free delivery to UK addresses from their warehouse in the West Midlands, with worldwide shipping available on nearly all of their 50,000 items of stock. They're also connected to a web of global suppliers to make sure if a part still exists, they can get it for you. However, the thing that really sets them apart is that their experience means that if they say something will fit your car, that it will and you don't have to worry about returns or replacements. Okay, so we're going to use a genuine Volkswagen service kit supplied by Deutsche Parts. It's £169.99 plus delivery. That might sound expensive, but the spark plugs on the UP GTI are expensive. There are three of them and they're £30 each from Volkswagen. So that takes up the lion's share of the cost. As well as those, we have a genuine oil filter. We have a sump plug with separate washer, which we can talk about later, that's kind of interesting. We've got oil, which is 530 Quantum, made by Fush for the Volkswagen Group. It's approved, as you'd expect. This is the 530, which is the more expensive option for the UP GTI. I'm sure you can run 540, but while the car's still young and low mileage, 530 is good. I'm not going to take it on track, or at least I think I'm not. So that should be perfectly fine. We get a cabin filter, which is the more expensive one, which is the carbon uh, activated one. There are plain paper ones that are a lot cheaper. I'm not sure if VW actually do them. And we get the air filter. Could fit a panel filter, but maybe that's something for the future. Okay, now let's talk tools. The good news is it isn't really that complicated. You need T30 and T25 Torx bits. I've got a screwdriver for the bolt that holds the air filter housing to the engine, that's the T30, and a T25 bit for the screws that hold the air filter together in its box. About 10 little screws. Actually, I've got the T25 on a drill, which makes the job a lot quicker, but you can obviously do it by hand with a ratchet. I've got a medium length extension, and that's important for the spark plugs, which come out with a 10 mil uh, spark plug socket. I've got a normal 10 mil socket, which is different. That's for the coil bolts oil filter removal tool, flat blade screwdriver because you always need one. Most important tool, um, hose clamp pliers. You can do without, but they just make it a lot easier to get the airbox on and off its little air boot. 19 mil socket for the sump plug and torque wrenches, which you don't need as long as you're really careful. Axle stand so the car doesn't land on your head trolley jack, which I haven't got here to lift the car up, obviously, oil jug and oil funnel. It's four litres of oil, by the way, which is um, as specified by Volkswagen on this maintenance checklist that you can download from Irwin. Just register there. I think it's free. If you register, I'm pretty sure you, as a private individual, can do this, and it gives you a list of all the things you need to do, but also tells you that you need four litres of oil. And also, what I also don't have here is some containers to drain the oil into so you don't spill it all over the floor. That's it. As I said, not really 
that complicated. Let's go and get started then on the full service on my UpGTI. Okay, I'm ready to get started. I've got the twat cam on my head that will take you places other cameras won't take you, even if you might not want to go there. And I thought for a bit of fun, we'd time it to see how long it takes to do the oil change, air filter, spark plugs, and cabin filter on a LEP GTI. It's now 13.34. Let's go. So we're jacking on the jacking point and the axle stands I tend to put underneath the um, rear wishbone bush. Easy to forget, dipstick out, oil filler cap off to increase the drain rate. And then no under tray really to, to worry about. 19mm socket. There she comes. Onto the oil filter. Okay, that's coming. Get the tool off before it's too tight. And now we can move the drainer. By the way, the engine was not long turned off, so the oil is nice and warm. To give the mounting points of the filter white just check the old seals not still on there visibility is really really good actually it's a change lovely then we can leave that to drain and we think it's a good idea to just put the car back down on the ground so that it drains more thoroughly to the sumps at an angle where Now onto the air filter. Surprisingly complicated for a little car. So I'm doing the T30 uh, that holds it onto the engine at the front. It's otherwise studs holding it in place that just pull off. Try not to drop this. Okay, flat blade screwdriver to get the vacuum pipe, vacuum hose off. Okay. I should pull off now, let's have a go. Oops, that's good. Right, yeah. Hose clamp pliers. Okay, that's the air box off. And if you're just doing an air filter, you just stop now and take this apart. But we're doing the plug, so we'll carry on. Now, you can get access to two coils really easily, but this third one is underneath this air pipe. But luckily, they've thought about that, so you just have to push these tabs apart. And then it lifts off the, uh, the, the throttle body. Yep. And then here, same sort of thing. Push that one apart. That one's a bit trickier, but it's easy enough. There's a plug on the back of here, which I think is probably like a manifold air pressure sensor. that off and there's a valve on the back that needs popping off and that's got a clip on the back as well uh, for a wiring loom get that in a sec this vacuum pipe is quite annoying so you just undo it here and then that gives you the freedom in theory to pull it off like that now on here the loom clips on so basically the valve clips onto there, the pipe or the hose from it clips onto there and it, the loom clips on there, that blade to the rescue. Okay, now we have access to the plug, so let's do them one at a time, starting with number one, the hard one. 
undo the plug by pressing in the clip, push it down and then pull it out. That's the easiest way. And then 10 mil bolts. And then there is a tool, a puller for getting these out, but I don't think you need it. Access isn't too terrible. Okay, number three. Now time to remove the plugs. Interesting, this um, sort of insulation on this pipe is starting to crumble off. So that's something to watch. It's not very old either, and uh, yeah, there's bits of it on the top of the rock cover as well. So it's obviously been put on there to do a job, which it won't be doing very well. Okay, plug two. A little bit rusty on the threads there, and that's the thing about plugs. You may think 24,000 miles, and I'll do a lot better than that, but it's probably not far off from getting seized into the aluminium head which would cause you a lot more problems. Now the official instructions say you should grease the um, top of the plug, but actually the coils have still got a fair bit in them, so I think we should be okay. So start them off by hand, and then when you can't put them in by hand anymore, get onto the ratchet they should not be tight at all at this point okay the torque on this is uh, 22 newton meters which we've got on here Yeah, that's not particularly tight. It's just slightly further from where I stopped. And actually, I'm not really happy with all this muck on the top of the rock cover, so I'm just going to get the back. Okay, coils are ready to go back in. Right, so push them down and then they should be pretty much all the way there before you put the, the bolt in. Again, start off by hand. Now there is a torque setting for those, eight newton meters. Honestly, you probably don't need to do this, just don't over tighten it. Okay, plugs back on. Make sure you hear the click. Beautiful. All right, now it's the air filter's turn. So this is reminiscent of Mark V GTI, i.e. a bit of a pain. So we're using T25 to undo the bolts screws really it's got to be it now yep let's see what condition that is that's uh, interesting so that's the dirty side so actually it's not too bad what's this like it really mint okay simple as that so one, two, nine, okay, miss one. Okay, now we need to get this air pipe in position. So we just need to get this vacuum hose 
over the top of it. It's all like that. So when it's lined up, it kind of just falls into place really. Give it a good tug so it clips into place. Both sides. Actually, we'll leave that loose for a minute so we can get around the back of here. Okay, so let's plug in the probably map sensor, clip the valve on, clip its hose in, and then the loom sits underneath it. Quite hard to see. So I'm happy with that. Okay. Clip the hose on there. Push that down. Check it's in position. And that's rock solid. Hose on there. Hose on there. Okay, airbox on. I need to watch this foamy pipe because if a bit of foam comes off while you're putting this on, it might end up in the engine. Okay, that's just lined up. Let's get this accordion bit on. Push that down. Make sure it's all the way in. It's really easy to get that wrong if you're using pliers. And that's it. Money well spent. Okay, push that onto its studs. Hose back on. And then do not drop this T30. He says. in the air. Beautiful. Okay, so oil should be out. Let's get the filter on. 25 newton meters. 20? 20 plus 2. We've I put a film of oil on there already. Some plug bolts is 30. That's just lovely and clean. Let's get the filter on. So, 22. That's it. I had the click. Okay, now normally I fit a sump plug with a built-in washer, but actually the official instructions say you should convert these to ones where you put the washer on separately, presumably because it's better for the environment. Bingo. Okay, get the oil out to make sure we dispose of it in an environmentally friendly way. Let's get it back on the ground. Now generally when they tell you how much to put in, it's usually there or thereabouts. It does specify you should not suck the oil out by the way. There are quite a few engines that are like that and um, yeah I know a lot of people, I know a lot of you guys like to do that because it is easier and cleaner. You have to scrub around on the floor but so yeah on this particular engine it doesn't give you a full drain. Okay, fill the cap back on, the right way round, dipstick back in. To check the oil level after an oil change you need to start the engine up, let it idle briefly, then turn it off and wait for about 30 seconds to a minute for the oil level to settle. Get the dipstick as usual, give it a wipe first, then dip it again and the level should be somewhere between minimum on and maximum. On this car it's actually exactly in the middle which is perfect because when the oil expands when the engine's hot it'll be much closer to the maximum though I think it needs a couple of hundred mil more to actually get to the maximum. Something I'll check when the engine is warm. For the cabin filter, so these are due every couple of years, often neglected, but you're the main bit of the car and this is responsible for the air that you breathe. So it is quite important. Now under here, and you wouldn't really know unless you saw it, behind the glove box, this is a, this is a pollen filter, long, uh, longitudinal, and 
it's um, in a box and this is the cover for it and there are some little tabs that are really flimsy and you can't see them and you push them in and this comes off and then pull the filter out now on the Mark V Golf every time I used to forget which way it went round because it had to go in a particular way on these they're rectangular you just need to make sure the airflow is in the correct direction so apparently this is original to the car and it is yeah superficially it looks all right but in there there's quite a bit of contamination that will restrict its flow so that's good it's the same brand same in fact it's identical which is unusual airflow pointing towards the driver so it goes in like that and as I mentioned earlier it's carbon um, activated so it's really good at um, stopping pollution getting into the cabin much more so than just a plain paper one which is a lot a lot cheaper like I said you're the most important part of the car so you shouldn't skimp on that that's got to lock in and then it should just push into place Okay, pull down on these bits just make sure it's secure and that's it okay where are we time wise so that was um it's 1405 so i think that was about half an hour so that's not too bad now obviously you don't have to do the oil change part of that work if you're going to give your car to a garage and get them to do it along with the mot but having done the other work once the garage has done their bit, you'd have pretty much covered everything required within a full service. There are some things you still need to do yourself. For example, this job sheet lists the checking the condition of the auxiliary belt, the poly V belt, which drives the alternator, which is easy enough to do. Just look for cracking in the rubber. It also says to check the plenum chamber, which is this area under the windscreen, um, for soiling and to charge the customer extra to clean it if it needs it. This is pretty important actually because tree debris, if you park into trees, can fill that area up really quickly and that causes blockages of the drain holes which can fill the cabin full of water. So yeah, that's definitely worth doing. There's no mention of lubricating the door hinges and door check straps or running a diagnostic check, but I like to do that anyway. So the big question is how much you will have you saved doing it yourself? Well, £169 for the parts and the oil sounds quite expensive already, you might say, but if you go to Volkswagen's website, look at their fixed price servicing for cars over three years old, which in theory is discounted a bit, the most comprehensive service they quote is £255, and that's basically an oil and filter change and an inspection. So if you want the plugs, the air filter or the pollen filter done, they're going to charge you a lot more. So it's almost like that fixed price servicing is really to get you in and you don't read the small print and then you sat at the desk and they go, you need all this and overgoes your credit card so yeah i still think it's going to be a good saving if you do it yourself and it's enjoyable particularly on this car the other thing was talking about are brake fluid changes the first one's due at three years and then they're every two years after that so i can only assume they fit magic brake fluid in the factory that lasts for a year longer this car's four years old so it shouldn't be due a brake fluid change but it missed the one at three years so it is due so i'll do another video on that and i'll show you how to do it um, what it does need though are wiper blades they seem to work okay but these ones are pretty um <laughs> ugly they've gone rusty now these ones from volkswagen are 38 pounds which sounds um expensive but then when you see what's happened to these you realize yeah it's probably a good idea to maybe pay a bit more but these ones don't seem to have any uh, any metal exposed on them so they're not gonna they're not gonna rust now they're really easy to fit. Sorry, I just fitted one without even telling you how to do it. You just have to um, lift the wiper arm up. It does clear the bonnet. So you don't need to put the wipers in the service position, which puts them up on the screen. It's actually easier to do them like this. There's a little tab on the, well, it's actually the wiper blade itself. It's square. You push that in through a hole in the wiper arm and just pull it out. And then simply line it up and slot it into place like, like that. Job done. Just be careful not to let the arm 
hit the windscreen with the wiper blade fitted or not because it will almost definitely damage it. Because the FGTI doesn't have a spare wheel, it comes with a tyre repair kit. And the most important part of that is the foam. This doesn't last forever. It has an expiry date on it. And on this 2019 car, it's actually just expired at four years old. So something to check on your car. The good news is you don't have to go to a main dealer and pay about 50 pounds for the foam. Ring, do an alternative that's apparently OEM spec and it's just 21 pounds 49. If the garage hasn't already reset the service reminder, it's really easy to do. What you need to do is press the 0.0 stroke set button in the instrument cluster, turn the ignition on, and then release that. And then you can choose whether you want to reset the service or not with the buttons on the steering wheel. That's it, job done. Car's now ready for another 10,000 miles before it's due. Just a basic oil change. Let me know what you want me to do with this car because I've had it a couple of months. I haven't really done much with it. I did mention I was going to do work on the suspension. This all costs money and I don't really have that kind of money to throw at it. So if you work for a suspension company, whether you're a supplier or a manufacturer and you want to get involved in this project, which is basically to try and make this car feel a bit more sophisticated with its suspension, it goes around corners just fine, but the ride's a little bit uncomfortable and it does tend to bottom out the suspension with a bang. I want to eradicate that but retain the handling and give the car a bit more comfort. If you think that's possible and you know how to do it, get in touch and we'll, uh, we'll make some videos. Thanks for watching this Volkswagen video. Keep subscribing, keep commenting and I'll see you for the next one very soon.